Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to compile our very first C++ program. So we're going to write some code in C++, we're going to compile it and then we're going to run it. And we're going to use the command line to do that. So you can see here I'm in Windows, I've got the command line that has the run terminal at the very top left. That's important because that's the one that has our command, uh, our compiler in it. And notice I'm in the C drive, just the root of my hard drive because um, I just reopened the command line. So I'm going to go back to where my code was wants to be or where I want to put my code and so for me that's users slash Sean you probably don't have a Sean folder um, but wherever you want to put your code um, go there and I'm going to go into this folder I created and notice as I start typing here I just hit tab and it'll actually auto complete what it thinks and if it's wrong I just hit tab again and it'll go to the next one and so I, what I want to do is I want to go to CSCI235 I just hit tab and it auto completes that's a nice handy trick there to uh, type in paths quickly I'm going to make a new folder here that you might already have uh, first program to put our first program in it's a good idea to have a separate folder for each assignment or for each program uh, that you create I'm going to change into that folder uh, using CD and um, there we go and all these commands again are the same in Windows and Mac OS so far um, including CD now in Mac OS you'll have forward slashes in in Windows you'll see I've got a lot of backslashes but other than that it's exactly the same okay so here's where we're going to create our source code and we're going to use editor uh, we're going to use an editor for this we're going to use visual studio code now you may have heard of visual studio that's a really large very powerful very good uh, ide integrated development environment this is visual studio code so it's a much smaller lighter weight program um, it installs on mac os and windows and linux and so that's very handy for us it's very customizable and hackable we're going to do a little bit of customization today and so um, we'll take advantage of that so i highly recommend it and you can open it from the command line by just typing code once you have it installed so once you install visual studio code you can just type code and uh, hit enter and it'll pop up now the first time you open it um, and I've actually opened it already once, which is why you see this. Um, but the first time you open it, um, you'll see this welcome settings uh, options um, kind of shows you how to customize little things you can do, learn about it. If you uh, don't want to see this every time you open it, you can just uncheck down here, uh, show welcome message. Um, I'm going to just exit out of it. We're going to change a couple of the settings uh, that will help you write better code in C++ and really in any language. Um, so. Uh, just recommendations here. You don't have to change these settings, but it's highly recommended. I'm going to go to File, Preferences, and Settings here. And note also, it gave me the keyboard shortcut here, so I could also just type Control, Comma to have this uh, settings pop up. That's a nice shortcut there. Now, in this editor, all the settings are stored in this um, file here on the left in this uh, JSON syntax that stands for JavaScript object notation. <laughs> you don't need to know that, but you'll learn more about it if you take scripting, uh, CSCI 301 um, later. And um, But anyways, uh, on the left here, we've got different settings that you can actually change and edit. Um, so, for example, if we go to editor, um, you can see a whole bunch of different settings that you can change and a little description above what they do. Um, and so it's a great idea to search the Internet. Here's where you can change the fonts that are used to show up um, all kinds of great stuff. And you can search for a particular setting up here. And so what we're interested in is we're in interested in two settings. One is insert spaces. And you can see here it has insert spaces set to true. And here's the description. It says insert spaces when pressing a tab. Now, when we press the tab character on the keyboard, we actually want a hard tab. We want the actual tab. We don't want it to convert to spaces for this class. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line of code and um, control C to copy. And I'm going to paste it over here. So I'm going to add a comma at the end of this line, start a new line, and uh, paste it right here. And now I can change it from... Uh, true to false because we don't want spaces and then when I save it notice here I've got a circle so that means the settings haven't been saved if you ever see a circle in front of a file it means it has not been saved and also here this one here means one unsaved file so if I save it I can go to file save or I can just hit control s in most of your my videos you'll see me just hit control s now it's saved that setting has been applied so that's great. Now we're going to change one more setting. And this one is the, um, we're going to add a little horizontal line to indicate when a line is, um, when we've typed too much code for a single line. So that's under rulers. 
um, here you can see editor.rulers and um, I'm just going to copy this line of code and paste it over here. And also notice on the left it says render vertical rulers after a certain number of monospace characters. And that's what we want. We want a ruler. We want a line after 80 characters. In this class you shouldn't ever type a line of code that's longer than 80 characters. That's a very common standard uh, when you're dealing with companies. Um, sometimes they have different numbers, but very 80 is the traditional common standard. And so if we type 80 here, that's going to add a vertical line to the right. Um, so you can see there it pops up and that's at the 80 character mark and so we could change it we could change it to 50 now it's a little closer we can actually add two lines maybe we want 50 and 80 so it's just comma separated there and um, you can see now we've got two lines um, what we want is just 80 so there's an 80 line mark we don't want to write any code any lines of code that are longer than 80 characters long for this class and that's a very common standard amongst other um, you know, developments uh, in other languages, um, in companies, etc. Many open source projects as well. All right, so that's the setting. So I'm going to exit out of that. We saved it. I hit Control S. Um, and here's Visual Studio Code. Now I'm going to open this uh, program one more time. You don't have to exit out of it, but um, I just want to show you one other way you can open code. You can type code and then the name of a file, and it'll actually open this file. And if it's not a file that's already exists, it'll create it. So I'm going to create, um, let's call it, uh, hello.cpp and so th it's important when you create a C++ program to always end with .cpp that lets the compiler and the editor know that it's a C++ program and so that's really important so we're going to type that in and I'm going to hit enter and we're going to open up Visual Studio Code again and now this time you can see it automatically opens hello.cpp here um, and it's unsaved and so if I hit control S or go to file save, you can see now it's saved. If I go back to the command line and I type in dir, you can see in this directory, in this folder, we now have a hello.cpp. We just created that file. Pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to type in some code here. And first I'm just going to copy and paste a comment. So this is a comment. It's not read by the computer. It's not converted into machine code. <clears throat> It's just for the it's just for us, the readers of the code. And so at the top of all your C++ programs, you should always put a comment that describes what the program does. So that's what we have here and who wrote the program. So that's me in this case. And then we're going to put pound include IO stream. You're going to know what this line means shortly, but just for now, include it. And I'm, I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit here. That way you can see the code a little better. And then I'm going to write using namespace std and uh, you'll learn what that means about halfway through the semester and then int main curly braces and then in here we're going to type our code that runs when the program executes when the program gets run and so c out we're going to show something on the screen that's what that means and then two less than symbols and then double quotes and then inside these double quotes you can put anything you want to this is what's going to show up on the screen and so i'm going to write hello world because that's the traditional thing that people put um, in any introductory tutorial to any programming language. And then end L here, and then a semicolon. And then I'm going to write return zero. This exits the program. And uh, then we're done. So I'm going to save it, control S. And then I'm going to go back to the command line. And we're going to compile it. So I'm going to clear the screen here. You can do that by typing CLS. Um, you don't have to clear the screen, but sometimes it's good to just get all the busyness out of the way. And if you're in um, Mac OS or Linux, you can just type clear. So CLS or clear, depending on what operating system. All right, so here's the easiest way to compile it, but not the best way. So keep watching the video. Don't just stop here. Um, you want to do the correct way, which has a couple more uh, parameters. But for now, the simplest way that I'm going to show you first, and then we're going to add to it, is this. Um, Hello.cpp. So I'm just naming G++. That's the name of our compiler. Hello.cpp is the name of the program we want to compile. And so this is going to convert it from what we understand, the code we just wrote, to what the machine understands, the zeros and ones that um, the computer understands, the machine code. I hit enter. No output means it worked. So there's no error. So that's a good sign. Now if I type dir, there's a new file here. It's called a.exe. And if you're in Linux or Mac OS, it'll actually be a.out. But same thing. Um, so here, this is our executable. This is the thing we can run or execute uh, to run our program. So if I type a.exe, then we see on the screen, 
hello world. So this is the output of our program we just created. Pretty cool. Now, if you want to run it in Mac OS, you need to type dot forward slash a dot out. Um, so that will run it there. Now, uh, I said before that this is that the way we compiled it was not the best way. Let me clear the screen again. And I'm just going to hit the up arrow. So up arrow kind of cycles through your previous commands. So I'm going to go back up to this command here and we're going to add a couple more things in the middle here. A couple more parameters, things we're passing to our G++ compiler. So the first is dash capital W extra. And that means we want all the warnings. There's errors and warnings in a, a computer program that gets compiled. And uh, errors are things that are just not valid code. So not valid C++ in this case. And warnings are things that technically the compiler can make them compile. It understands what they're supposed to do, but they're probably not what you meant to write. So it's probably an error, um, just not a syntax error, but a logic error, a semantic error. And so this will detect some of those and we want to display those. We don't want in this class any warnings. And so uh, anything you write that has a warning is something not written correctly. And so add this parameter to see what those are. And then the next thing we're going to write is STD equals C plus plus 17. This says I want to use the standard that is the 2017 standard of C plus plus. That's the latest standard that came out. Um, now, if you compile with this and it gives you an error and says, I don't know what that is, try 14, uh, not 15, 14. And that is the previous standard, uh, 14 or 17. Either one is good for this class, but might as well use the latest one if it works on your computer. All right, then we're gonna ask that add dash O and the name that we want to give our executable. We don't just want to call it a.exe or a.out. I want to give it a, a meaningful name. I usually just type hello or whatever the name of my input file is, but you can call it whatever you want. I could call it world in this case, world. And um, then the final thing, what we already have typed here is hello.cpp. Whoops, I hit the over arrow. I'm gonna have to type that again. Fortunately, and this is will become old hat to you as well. It's very, you'll learn to type it very quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna hit enter. And that is gonna compile it, no error, so no output, that's a good sign. Now, if I type dirt, you can see we have our old a.exe, that's old. What we, our newly compiled thing is this world.exe because I gave it the name world up here. And if you're in Mac OS or Linux, you'll just have world, you won't have world.exe. Um, exe in Windows means it's an executable, something that can be run. So now we can type world and it'll run hello world. And I can delete that a.exe because we don't need it anymore. No sense in having, um, oops, I typed dir, I meant D-E-L for delete uh, a.exe. And uh, just uh, as a review, you can type ls in Linux, that's the same as dir for showing. So now that a.exe is gone. Okay, so that's how you compile. Now I want to show you what happens when there's an error in your source code. Let me clear the screen here again. And let me go back to our code and let's introduce an error. So oftentimes it's a very common error in uh, beginners typing C++ code. Um, instead of writing end L here, they'll write end one because that L looks an awful like a lot like a one. So if we do that, I'm going to save my code, put a one there. I go back and I try to compile it. I'm just hitting the up arrow again to see my previously typed commands because I don't want to retype all that. And I hit enter here. Here we get a warning. And so it says hello.cpp and it says there's an error on line 11 at location 28. That's 28 characters from the beginning of the line. And it says error end one was not declared in this scope, which means it doesn't know what end one is. It says, I don't know what end one is. And then it shows us line 11. And so on line 11, it gives us a little arrow pointing to where it thinks the error is. And here it is. And then it gives a suggestion. It says suggested alternative enum. Well, that's not a very good suggestion. We don't want enum here. We want end L, but it tried. Um, so you can see how that's very helpful. So on line 11, there's a problem. And we can go here and we've got line numbers on the left hand side. And so we can see, oh yeah, that's where the error is and change it to an L. And then we can go back to the command line and recompile our code. 
and there we didn't get any output that time and that means it worked and then we can run our world and you can see hello world right there that's what our program does so pretty cool um, we just wrote our first c program we fixed an error we compiled it several times in different ways we're using the latest c standard um, so i think we've accomplished a lot of great things in this video um, as always let me know if you have any questions